Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Sunday, December 1st. It's 9 o'clock a.m. Well, I wanted to share with you a most beautiful message that you could enjoy for your Sunday morning service. It's from a channel I had never heard of called Rise on Fire. And I love this young man. I haven't Let's see, did I listen to another one of his? I, I listened to a few. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I did. And every one of them I liked. It was him. This one is called Loving Like Jesus, The Greatest Commandment. I want to play just a couple of minutes to show you what he sounds like. I'm not sure of the accent. Maybe Irish. Shows a couple of... Every arguing. mother hit by her husband. Every father betrayed. Every unborn baby abandoned. Every son falsely accused. Every daughter told she's not good enough to every disease. From pain deep into the bones, to itching all over the skin, to the lame man on the street, to every wheelchair and every crutch and every other disease. He bore it all. Every evil thing in this world born by him. Imagine the biggest and greatest navy battleship and the fullness of that weight on your shoulders and you wouldn't even come close. What he experienced was incomprehensible. No matter the things that you've done, the reality is, is that he took everything that man has ever done, everything man has ever thought of doing, every evil thing that man will do in the future, and all that weight rested on his shoulders. You see, he was the one, the only one clean. Therefore, he was the only one qualified to be angry, to be unforgiving, to say, I don't need to do this because he didn't need to. The only one who could say, I will not do this. But yet he did. Yet he did. I liked how he said he was the only one qualified to be angry and say, I don't have to do this. We have to love one another. We have to love the unlovable. We have to do things we may not want to do because it's what Jesus would do or what he would want. Love one another as you want to be loved. But love the Lord your God most with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Jesus said on these two commandments fall all the laws and the prophets. I'm not really sure what he meant by that. On these two commandments fall all the laws and the prophets. What's your idea of what that means? Maybe he meant prophecies that were to come to pass. Perhaps there's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. 
I think he was making it clear that we don't do away with the Old Testament. But he did fulfill the laws when he died on the cross. Gave us two new ones. I've preached about this before. Love God most. Love one another. The way Jesus would love us. The way he wants us to. And you know what? If you are convicted, you feel convicted to keep the Sabbath, you go right ahead. If you feel convicted to not celebrate Christmas, you just go right ahead and don't. I feel convicted, or what do you say? Maybe that's not the right word. I know that Jesus was conceived at the darkest time of the year. And I think that deserves a little frivolity. Festivity. Celebration. Jesus told me he loathed the paganism. And I know what he meant by that. You know what they did at the winter solstice. The candles in the windows when they were lit meant the orgy was going on. So does that mean it's wrong to have candles lit in your windows? I think they're gorgeous. What's your reason for putting them up? He doesn't want the orgy going on. He hates those drunken office parties. He hates the family coming together to drink and be merry and play Santa Claus. Santa Claus is a lie cooked up by Satan. Look at the letters. Rearrange Santa. And what do you get? Satan. It gets children thinking about this fake, fat, jolly, mythical creature that doesn't exist. Oh, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Okay, so you tell your children this. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Yeah, right. That's taking the place of God Almighty. That's what Jesus hates. Lying to your kids. Oh, if you're not good, Santa's going to put a lump of coal in your stocking. Oh, no, Mama, I'll be good. That's what Santa Claus hates. All the lying, putting onto this mythical creature known as Santa Claus, the attributes of God, knowing everything. Knowing who's been good and who's been bad. That's why those kind of songs were written. Santa doesn't no more know anything than, he, than your shoe size. Come on, let's get real. Discern the truth from the lies. Realize if you want to celebrate, why are you? What's it all about? I celebrate the coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into the womb of Mary, even though he wasn't technically born until the fall. Which I don't know how a tabernacles, I believe he was born during tabernacles, so I'm not sure how that played out. 
but they did go by the lunar calendar, not by the solar, as my understanding. I put up my nativity scenes and I decorate for winter because I decorate for every season. So I've been pretty busy doing that. It's tiring, so I have to take frequent breaks. And I watched videos in between and answered emails and comments. So I just wanted to be upfront with you about that. I don't want to hide anything. I'm not going to tell you to not celebrate Christmas. And then do what I do. It's the pagan origin and the lying about Satan, which Santa, I'm sorry, that just came out of my mouth. He's, he is Satan. But that didn't even come along until long after pagan days. You see? So, you know, the pagan stuff started so long ago. None of us put stuff up because of we're pagans. Let's face it. I hang lights for Hanukkah. I use lights. And this year I did make a little evergreen bush. Small. Cute. All natural except for the greenery is not, a, not natural. But you know what? Our God Almighty created evergreen trees, evergreen bushes to remind us that there is life all year round. That's my opinion. And so what if the pagans used it first? They also had mother-child worship. Does that mean it's wrong to have a nativity scene because it might have Mary holding Jesus? Which it never does. It's got Jesus in the, in the manger. The word of God says he was born and placed in a manger. Never says he was born in a stable. Read it. Luke chapter 2. Maybe I'll read all that for you one of these days before, if we're still here. I'll read the Christmas story, if you want to call it that. Or shall we say, the biblical account of when Jesus Christ came into the world. I'll do that in the next day or two. I love that story. And who was really there? And who wasn't? Okay, so... If that costs me a few subscribers, so be it. But I'm not legalistic about it. And Jesus knows my heart, and I know what he told me. He also told me I could give the gifts I had bought that year, but no more. So I didn't, I wasn't sure if he meant not a single gift, or don't buy a bunch of gifts like I did that year. I don't think he likes excessive buying just to impress. That's another thing they did. They bought presents for everybody. I mean, it was excessive spending or time consumption in making whatever, however they got the gifts. When our time don't take time away from the Lord to do any of this stuff. Keep him in his place where he belongs first in your life. And think, why do I do this? Why do I, why do I do all this? I have to celebrate it. The King of Kings, the Son of God, left his heavenly estate came to this earth at the darkest time of the year to be impregnated into Mary. 
And you know, when the sperm met the egg, a light went off. Boy, I bet that whole room lit up. That's how one movie shows it. Do you reckon they knew that? Did they know that science at that time? I doubt it, because that was kind of an older movie. And it was Israeli scientists that did that experiment and found that when the sperm enters the ovum, a light is sparked, showing that life begins at conception. And he grew as a human in Mary's womb until it was time to enter the cold, dark world. And he did that for us. Knowing he would die a horrible death, it all started at the darkest time of the year. I find it a reason to celebrate. And if you feel it's wrong, then don't do it. If you can't get past what the pagans did thousands of years ago, then don't do it. You take it to the Lord and ask Him. All right? So, learn what you're knowing. Learn, learn why you're doing what you're doing. The pagans did a whole lot of things that we still do. All of our weddings, wedding rings, that's pagan. Should we all chunk our wedding? This is what I wear because I'm engaged. <laughs> I had to have a ring on my finger. I'm engaged to Jesus. But you married ladies. You have some beautiful diamonds and a nice band. You're going to throw those away because they were pagan? Hardly. There are other pagan things, the na names of the weeks and the months. You know, it, it kind of kills me, people that have to try to change all that and say, on the sixth day of the third month, uh... I got this message from the Lord. I mean, come on, seriously? It's March 3rd or 6th, third month. It's March. Six days is six. March 6th. That's what we go by. That's what we live by. Do you think Jesus minds us calling our months January, February, March, April, May? No, that's the life we live. That's the world we're born into. We just need to keep Jesus first and know why we do what we do. That's my little, what would you call it, dissertation on why I still celebrate at this time of year. Jesus came into the world to save us. Now this young man teaches you how to love like Jesus. And I hope you'll give him a listen. It's called Loving Like Jesus, The Greatest Commandment by Rise on Fire. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video excuse me, the internet connection and over each and every one of you and all of your devices. And all of our internet connections so we can stay connected. Oh, I have to decide where to switch my channel to. I don't know what to do.
I have to decide, and I have a very hard time making decisions. Pray that Jesus will guide me on that, okay? All right, thanks a lot, and y'all are in my prayers. I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.